Hey, welcome back to the business of building apps. This is a course that will help you create apps and the business of making sure that it's a profitable business for you. So in this course, we're talking about seven or eight different categories. So we're in item number two right now, which is about designing an app. But as you can see, there are other chapters and other topics that we need to cover. And so if you'd like to see some of these, make sure that you subscribe and watch the others. My name is Shad Sluter and I'm a professor of software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. And so welcome to class and please join us for others. So in this, we are talking about application design. And so really those are four questions about how your app's going to look. First of all, which features are we going to choose? Second, what the app looks like. Third, what's the experience of the user? And finally, what goes into creating a minimal viable product? or the MVP. And so we're here in section two. If you haven't seen the others, please look at the other items in the playlist for this course. So what does the app look like is what we're asking today. And what that question is, is what is the user interface going to be? What are the principles of design and how do you make an effective user interface? And so to answer that question, we need to talk about a process called onboarding. So onboarding is a way to turn a novice or completely ignorant person about your application into somebody who is a minimal user, somebody who is adopting your program. So onboarding sounds exactly like what it's, it's talking about getting on a ship. And so let's think about the process of a, a cruise company and adopting users into their system. So you're the cruise client, you're going on vacation and you show up at the boat. What are the questions that you would have when you get to the dock. The questions are gonna be things like immediate needs. Where's my room? Does my key work? Or where do I put my suitcases? So if you're trying to onboard a customer in this situation, you better make sure that these questions are answered. Don't shove a menu in their face or give them a plan for how they're going to get off and do tours at the first island. Those are for later. And so once people get installed into their room and they got their first cup of coffee and they start to feel comfortable, what are their next questions going to be? They're going to say, what's the Wi-Fi password? Or when is supper? Or what entertainment is happening on the ship? And so these are questions that you would present to the user when they get to this stage. And so you might have a piece of paper or a poster in the room or some kind of a guide on an app or whatever. You're going to guide them through the process of onboarding. And so you want to do the same thing with your applications. And so don't present them with all of the features of your user interface at the beginning. Just give them one or maybe two options and make it so obvious that they always choose the most logical thing. So only show the most urgent and essential features of your starting screen. And in our case, since we're starting a brand new app, maybe that's the only features that are in your app. And so your user interface make sure that the essential features are obvious and super easy to adopt. So perhaps one of the best examples of making things obvious is Google. No wonder they're a good search company. Well, they give good searches, but there's really only one thing to do here. Uh, you have a search item and you have this other, I'm feeling lucky. I don't even know why they still have that there. I've never clicked it other than the first experimental time. But anyway, they're pretty simple. They've got a great user interface. Now consider what they used to compete against. Uh, Yahoo was really the only other viable choice for search engines. And what in the world are we supposed to do here? So if you knew what you were after when you started Yahoo, you probably hit the search bar. But they've got so many other distractions going on. Am I supposed to download a toolbar? Well, no thanks on that one. Am I supposed to browse news? Am I supposed to get weather? And there were a lot of choices. And I think the strategy was, let's just give every kind of idea possible to our users and increase uh, interactivity there. Instead of focusing on one really good thing, such as search, uh, they tried the buffet approach. And other than giving away all of their user data in a data breach, uh, Yahoo just was completely defeated by Google for a number of reasons. So don't be Yahoo when you're trying to create an app. So it's fun to hate people. So let's go take a look at another one that I would like to criticize. So this is Adobe Illustrator. Uh, Photoshop and Illustrator are like the dominant tools for design and graphic arts. So I consider myself you know, somewhat 
proficient in both of these. Uh, I teach them in school. But the one thing that always bothers me is, ironically, the tool used to design user interfaces and choose layouts and wireframes in itself is a horrible example of a user interface. As you can see, if I want to select a color, there are multiple ways to get to that. And so Adobe apparently thought that multiple ways is a good thing. And the users have flexibility. You can even uh, you can even customize the user interface so that only you understand it. And everyone else that looks at your computer is completely baffled. Uh, and so this is a, an example of succeeding in spite of having a bad product. And so what do these icons do? If you look at these Photoshop icons, you can see that they have some kind of a purpose. And then you click and hold on them. For goodness sakes, who would have ever thought of that? You click and do a long click on them and you get more menus that pop out beneath them. The only way you can know what these are is either to have a YouTube video from some 14 year old that's gonna demonstrate the, the process for you or take a class. What software requires you to take a class, in other words, to become a user? That's just telling me that there's way better solutions that could be done. Uh, take a look at, here's another example, uh, how to export a file. So I choose export, and now I'm it's presented with what, a dozen different things to export in different ways? Please help us. This should be a dialog box. And so Adobe, ironically, has the market on all of this. Here's their layers palette. So what are you supposed to do here? What is kind? Normal? Uh, what is going on with these little icons at the bottom? Some of these are effects. Some are browsing folders. It's, an, it's a complete overwhelming experience for a new user. Now, if you're already an Adobe user and you know all these features, you're probably proud of the fact that you've mastered the program. Well, good for you. For the rest of us, though, we want to have something simpler. So what is this thing? This is Sketch. So a competitor that does a lot of complex things. To be fair, Photoshop and Illustrator are complicated programs. They do very sophisticated things. But there are better alternatives out there, basically because of their user interface and user experience. They have all the features, but presented in a much more uh, straightforward manner. How many people actually need to read the manual for Sketch? What a contrast to what there is for Adobe products. <laughs> Here's another one that I picked up. Uh, this, is what ha this is what happens when you let developers build the user interface. So check this one out. Uh, what in the world are we supposed to do here? How many checkboxes do we need? Every one of these should be hidden away in, a, in another separate section where it shows up only when we need it to be. And so if you're a developer, don't take offense. There are people out there better than us. I, I consider myself a developer. There are people out there that are better than us at user interface design. And so it might be worth your time or money to get some advice and uh, at least get some plans from a user interface uh, perspective before you go ahead and develop your first vision. So here's the design order of what we're trying to create. So let's get some context here. So first of all, we picked out what our user needs are. We figured out which features are going to meet those needs. And now we're on creating the views. So every feature that you create has to have some kind of a screen to go with it, the view. And then finally, we'll get to the navigation at a later point. So let's talk about some of the UI elements that are going to make your app effective, some best practices. So this is just the, the 10 minute version of a, an entire uh, profession. So a mobile application should have some consistency. You should probably have something as a, the typical app. So don't try to get too creative on your user interface here. Make sure that you have a bottom toolbar and a top toolbar where users can see the same thing on each screen. So separate the functionality. Each feature that you're trying to do have its own screen. So don't try to create the monster screen with uh, 50 different check marks and different menus that you can pick from. Separate the tasks and put each task into its own view. And now you need to imitate and say, look at the favorite apps that you already use and know and you admire and just copy their design, their, their plan. So some people say that user interface is like a joke. What does that mean? It means if you have to explain it, you probably did it wrong. 
So I pulled up some examples of people who are designing user interfaces. So there's two things going on here. First of all, the user interface is each screen that is going to be in the app. And the second part, maybe we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but it's closely related, is how they relate to each other. So that's the user experience, the navigation essentially. And so what you want to do then is before you write code, just draw pictures. So you can do it as this was a pen and paper, obviously not too sophisticated, or you can get other tools that are actually nice to draw with and look like professional graphics. Uh, here's another example of a, an app that's going to be a diet app for your pet. And so the, the, the motive for the app is that healthy food is best provided to your pet by creating your own food in the kitchen. And so this app will help you create recipes, share them, and uh, be able to uh, improve the health of your pet. So every screen here represents a different task that's going to be done in the app. And then, of course, we can see the navigation between them. Here's another example of a project that somebody's working on. This is called the Time Bank app. And so it's a time management. So you can literally budget the amount of time that you plan to do on each task and for each calendar day. And you can borrow time from the bank. And then when you run out of time, you stop working on that task and go to another one. So I don't know if I would use this app myself, but it's certainly a novel idea. And for some people, this might be just what they need. But the point here I'm showing you is that this person has thought about each task that the user plans to do. And they've drawn it out in a very nice uh, pencil and paper format and then shown the navigation between them. And so you can see the link here, it's from Flickr, and you can find out if this uh, process is going to work for you. So let me recommend to you a resource. Uh, I like the title of the book. It's probably just worth that in itself. Don't make me think. And the idea is that user interface is supposed to be obvious. And so what are some of the things that Steve would recommend that you would do to make a user app? So extra credit reading for you. Go check it out. So along the lines of creating a, a good mobile experience, uh, think about the thumb. So as you design your screens, the top left corner of the screen is hard to reach with a, a right-handed person for sure. And how in the world are you going to put the main navigation menu in the top left corner if you are actually thinking about this? So consider someone riding a bicycle and trying to select a new podcast item. Where are you gonna put the button? they're going to have to stop their bike and use two hands if you put it in the upper left corner. So user interface is about knowing who your users are and when they're going to use your app. So fortunately, Google and Apple, the two main mobile application companies, have not left us in the dark. They've given us some pretty straightforward advice. So check out their human interface guidelines. And so I'm going to just scroll through here to show that they've got very good principles outlined here. And so they're basically stealing every lecture that I'm going to provide to you. So I'm just going to point you to them. And you can see that there is an entire book worth of material here to figure out how to do branding and colors and typography and how to use icons and navigation. So really, this is the resource that you should be looking for if you're building a mobile app for Apple. So Google has done the same favor for us with their Android documentation. So this is a developer page and you can see that they have an entire book's worth of how to make a good Android app based on the principles of design. And so you can see that they have an entire course worth of material here to follow. So run from me now and go to the experts at either Apple or Google to see what they have to say. I can't believe I just told somebody to stop watching my videos, but uh, go ahead and check them out and see if you can learn something about basic design from the experts. So let's assume that you're not a very good designer. Well, you can just buy templates that are pretty good. They've already designed many of the features that you're probably thinking of. So find a site like this. So here is a, a design template for somebody who has a book app. And so you can see that there are screens to show you individual books and how to browse for books. What else do they have? Let's scroll down until we get to the next one. So if you're into a cooking application, so recipes likely, we've got ourselves an entire UI layout for most of the screens that you can imagine for cooking. Education, so 19 screens here. You get the idea. So each different type of app that you're going to see has got a template. So it's probably worth spending some money here or somewhere else 
where you can buy a full template and user design already designed for you. And all you have to do is adapt it to the specific uh, details of your app. So taking the time or investment to create a good user interface will help you in several ways. First of all, think about who you're designing for. Number one, you have a good idea for yourself of what the final product will look like. And not only you, but potential investors and partners are going to have a concrete image in their mind of what your app is. Also, if you hire a developer then, and they have a great user interface to start with, they're not going to have to make any decisions or inventions that is not in their area of expertise. And so developers are good at creating something if they've already got a pattern to follow. And so investing in user design is a great way to start. The next phase of the design process is to talk about user experience. And so check out the next video here about the flow and experience of a user in your app. Also, if you'd like to see the entire playlist for this, this course series, then check out the next link, which is a playlist of all of them. So thanks for watching and welcome to class.